Hey there, let me show you how you can make a grappling rope in Godot 4 like this one. For starters, I'll be using my own character controller I worked on in the last two videos. It is based on the character controller body 3D node, so it is using forces to move the player. With that in mind, the grapple mechanic is quite simple to implement, since all it does is to move the player in the direction of where the hook is attached to. How can we figure out the hook location in the first person? For starters, let's add a raycast to the center of our camera. And in Reddit function, we update the max distance for this raycast. The axis you apply the constant to will depend on your scene setup. In my case, the negative Z axis is the forward direction of the player. By calling the getCollider function of our raycast, we can figure out whether it collided with something. If it did, we can use getCollisionPoint function to get the position as a vector 3. We will also need a player position, and for that all we need is to access the position property of node 3D. Once we have the two most important values, we can use them to generate real-time mesh for the rope. For this, let's add a mesh instance 3D child to our main player node. Next up, you have to set the top level property of node 3D to true, so that it ignores the parent transform. This is a crucial step, otherwise we wouldn't be able to rotate our player, since it would also affect the mesh. Now let's go over a rope generation script. Before I continue, I'd like to thank Sebastian Light for the Super Chore Man video involving relay integration, as well as Syntagma with the video on parallel transport. More on that in a second. From the two endpoints, we want to first initialize an array of all the points our rope will have. Think of them as segments that will be simulated. Those points will be represented using Vector3, and we can get them via interpolation like so. This function is only called once at the start of grappling. Afterwards, we will utilize relay integration to update the position of set points. In layman's terms, we are going to change the position of the point based on the difference of its current and previous position, which we can technically think of as its velocity. This is basically a simplified version of a rope motion. Also, we are going to apply a bit of gravity to the rope. Don't forget to include delta time so that you don't run into FPS dependent simulation. After we move those points, we now need to constrain them so that they don't fall down infinitely. We do that by adjusting their position so that it moves in a direction that will make their distance from the previous point closer to the ideal distance. Ideal distance being one nth of rope. Next up is converting the point into a mesh. In case of Godot, we need to use immediate mesh approach for real-time procedural mesh generation. It is one of the easier methods, but it is a bit slower. You need to define whether you're going to make a mesh from lines or triangles which will then affect how many vertices you need to define. In case of triangles, you will need to add multiples of 3. Once you're done, you need to call surface end function. But how can we get the set vertices and normals so that lighting works properly? Even though the goal is to make a 3D cylindrical shape for the rope, for now let's simplify it down to line. Since we do that, we already have our vertices, which are our points. From then, we can get our tangents. Tangents tell us where our line or curve is going, in other words, what the direction at any given point is. If you knew the function for your curve, you could use differentiation to get the tangent. But we're just going to subtract the two neighboring points from each other and normalize them to get this direction. In case of points with a neighbor on each side, we'll add up the directions towards them together and normalize them. As for the normal of a point, it will be orthogonal to our tangent. Without another vector to guide us, there would be infinite amount of orthogonal vectors. So for the first normal of our curve, we are going to get a somewhat of an arbitrary helper vector that only needs to not be parallel to our tangent. We will use this vector and our tangent to get their cross product, resulting in our normal. As for the rest of our normals, we will use this pseudocode. As for the explanation, I recommend you watch Entagma, which is where I got it from. But if you want the code for Godot, here it is, since that video uses different coding language. Now we almost have everything we need to get our mesh. The code I will show you is based on a slightly modified version of Sebastian's Lake's code. This is the part where we convert our line into a 3D cylinder. For every vertex, we are going to need our forward direction, which is tangent, our normal, and our right tangent, which is basically our left to right direction. Next up, based on how many sides we want our mesh to have, we are going to get the angle, and from that angle, we will get our offset vectors that we need to apply to the center point. Then we store that point in our vertex array. Now for a little bit of math. Let's imagine that we are looking at our point in a 2D space. The forward is behind our center, and our normal is currently directly above it. By tangent should be on the left if I'm not mistaken, but for the sake of explanation, let's put it on the right. If we make our cylinder with a square base, our angle will iterate over values pi half, pi, pi times 3 half, and 2 pi radians. 
Here comes the explanation behind signing cosine functions. First of all, an easy way to remember what ratio each of these functions represent is using the following abbreviations. Soch, ka, to. The first letters are the function names, aka sine, cosine, and tangent. The other two letters represent which sides of the triangle are we comparing. O stands for opposite, A is adjacent, and H is hypotenuse. Looking at this Pythagorean triangle, sine will compare the lengths of opposites to hypotenuse, cosine adjacent to hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite to adjacent. Or in other words, sine over cosine. Anyhow, since our normal is facing up, we will add the sine of our angle to it, because sine is telling us how much from minus 1 to 1 our angle is facing up. Cosine tells us how much our final vectors should be placed on the left to right axis. The way we will get back our vectors is by using an index array that will store integer values representing the indices of the vertex array. These seemingly random values are actually vertices which will always form one side of our mesh. And since we're using triangles, we need six vertices, two of which will be part of both of the triangles. Final step is just creating the surface. We are going to add vertices and trios, since we can then calculate unique tangents and normals for every side using three points. This will result in a mesh that will have duplicate vertices, but the lightning should be without errors. And that's how we make a real-time rope grappling gun mesh in Godot 4. I might go into UEs in the next video, but if you have any topics you'd like me to cover in the future videos, let me know down in the comments. If you're interested in implementing Jetpack in Godot 4, watch the video in the top right. Also, if you like my videos, I would be grateful if you subscribe. But that is everything from me, so thanks for watching, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!